Hello friends, in this session we will try and learn a few things about bond management. We will explore theories of bond management and various risks that bond valuation faces. Our focus will be on understanding the term and risk structure of interest rates. We will also elucidate duration and convexity of bond. Let us now learn some basic theorems of bond valuation and term structure. Bond prices often differ from face value over the period of time. Bertrand McKeel, an economist, has introduced five theorems that describes the relationship between bond prices and yields. These theorems are conceptualization of the relationship between bond prices, yields, coupons and maturity. Theorem 1. Bond prices move inversely with interest rates or it can be stated as bond prices and yields move in opposite direction. Theorem 2. The longer the maturity of a bond, the more sensitive is its price to a change in interest rates. Theorem 3. The price sensitivity of any bond increases with its maturity. but the increase occurs at a decreasing rate. A bond's sensitivity to interest rates changes, that is, it increases at a decreasing rate as its maturity grows. Theorem 4. The lower the coupon rate on a bond, the more sensitive is its price to a change in interest rates. Or, in other words, we can say that higher the rate of coupon, bonds lesser the interest rate risk. Theorem 5. For a given bond, its volatility is not symmetrical. That is, a decrease in interest rates raises bond prices more than a corresponding increase in interest rates at lower prices. Capital gains from an interest rate decline exceed the capital loss from an equivalent interest rate increase. It is important to know that the price yield relationship is fundamental to bond price behavior and is based on the principle that bond prices and yields move in opposite directions. This principle is derived from the fact that the price of a bond is equal to the present value of its future cash flows. That is, a change in yield mathematically must produce an offsetting change in price in the opposite direction. Because present value is an exponential function, the price yield relationship is convex, meaning that bond prices rise at an increasing rate when yields fall and decline at a decreasing rate when yields rise. Long maturities have greater price fluctuations. Therefore, if large changes in interest rate occurs, these bonds will be unattractive for speculative purposes. Similarly, lower the coupon, the higher is the price volatility. Again, these would not be preferable if rates are expected to rise. The implication of Malekiel's bond price theorem to bond investors concerns how investors should act with regard to trading in bonds. Specifically, the two major variables of bonds which are important in assessing price changes are number one, the coupon, number two, the maturity. To receive the maximum impact from an expected change in interest rate, investors should purchase low coupon, long maturity bonds. Let us now focus on risk in bonds. As compared to the stocks, it is generally considered that bonds are safe, investment and a great source of generating income. However, along with its benefits, we would also like to throw light on the other side of holding corporate and government bonds. In this topic, we will try to explain how money can be guarded against the risk that prevails in the market. Interest rate risk. The basic premise here is that interest rates and bond prices are inversely related. That is, as interest rate decreases, 
the prices of bonds trading in the market generally increases. On the contrary, when interest rates rises, the price of bonds tends to fall. It will happen because when interest rates are declining, investors try to capture or lock in the highest rates as it is the opportunity for him to earn as much as he can. This is known as speculation in simple language. The increase in demand results into an increase in bond prices. On the other hand, a rational investor always divert from the bond which pay lower interest rates and will invest in bonds with higher interest rates. This would force bond prices downwards. Let us look at an example now. An investor owns a bond that trades at power value and carries a 4% yield. Suppose the prevailing market interest rates surges to 5%. What will happen? Investors will want to sell the 4% bonds in favor of bonds that return 5%, which in turn forces the 4% bonds price lower par. Default risk. A bond is nothing but a certificate of debt that ensure that the investor that he will get his principal amount plus interest rate on it on a specific date of maturity. Elaborating the same, it means that this is borrowed money that must be repaid by the company over the time with interest. But many investors fail to realize that corporate bonds do not have such guarantee. Instead, they trade on the company's good, hence the return are dependent on the corporation's ability to repay that debt. As an investor, it is one's duty to calculate the probability and possibility of default, based on which the investment decisions should be taken. As means of analysis, the possibility of default can be determined by company's coverage ratio, which will give a better picture of the risk involved. Hence, it is better to understand it before initiating an investment. As an analyst, we will suggest that this analysis of the corporation's income and cash flow statements will determine company's operating income and cash flow. Further, by deriving various ratios or say by weighing the income and cash flow against its debt service expense, we know the leverage or say the capacity of company to repay its debt. The logic is greater the coverage or operating income and cash flow in proportion to the debt service expenses, the safer the investment. Thus, the calculated risk that an investor faces in an investment is known as default risk. Now we will study risk structure of interest rates. The relationship between the interest rates on bonds with the same term to maturity is called the risk structure of interest rates. The interest rate of a certain financial instrument may reflect the aggregate economic conditions, such as general economic perspective, inflation, expectation, systematic risk, etc. Thus, factors specific to the instrument can be classified as number one, risk structure, that is liquidity, default risk, taxation. Number two, term structure, which are bonds with longer maturities lead to larger fluctuations in rate of return and in interest rates. Thus, the interest rate tend to increase with maturities. We generally calculate risk structure by calculating the risk premiums. Next topic is bond duration. The term duration, as we know, is related to time duration with respect to bonds. Here it measures how long in years it takes for the price of a bond to be repaid by its internal cash flows. It is very important to measure for investors as it considers that a higher duration bond carries more risk 
and is more volatile than bonds with lower duration. Friends, there are two basic type of bonds, zero coupon bonds and vanilla bonds. We will now study the properties of these bonds duration. Starting with duration of a zero coupon bond. As we can see in the figure available here, the four year time period is taken by a zero coupon bond to mature. The money back balancing on the far right represents the future value of the bond. The amount that will be paid to the bond holder at maturity. The fulcrum holding the lever represents duration. Here in this case it is at four years. Hence the red lever is balanced here. The fulcrum balances the red lever at the point on the timeline at which the amount paid for the bond and the cash flow received from the bond are equal. The entire cash flow of a zero coupon bond occurs at maturity. So the fulcrum is located directly below this one payment. Now we will learn about duration of a vanilla or straight bond. Considering a vanilla bond, commonly known as a straight bond, pays coupon annually and matures in 5 years. The cash flows consist of 5 equal annual coupon payments and the last payment includes the face value of the bond. The picture shown represents the cash flow during the period and on the maturity date. Unlike the zero coupon bond, the straight bonds pays coupon payments throughout its life and therefore is generally short term in nature or say pays back sooner. Friends, now we will learn about modified duration. Modified duration is a formula that expresses the measurable change in the value of a security in response to a change in interest rates. Modified duration follows the concept that interest rates and bond prices move in opposite directions. Duration measures the average cash weighted term to maturity of a bond. It is very important number for portfolio managers, financial advisors and clients to consider when selecting investments because all other risk factors equal, bonds with higher duration have greater price volatility than bonds with lower durations. There are many types of duration and all components of a bond such as its price, coupon, maturity date and interest rates are used to calculate duration. This formula is used to determine the effect that a 100 basis point that is 1% change in interest rate will have on the price of a bond. Calculated as modified duration is equal to Macule duration whole divided by 1 plus YTM that is yield to maturity upon N. Now we will learn modified duration calculation. Modified duration is an extension of something called Macule duration which allows investors to measure the sensitivity of a bond to changes in interest rates. In order to calculate modified duration the Macule duration must first be calculated. The formula for the Macule duration is Macule duration is equal to a sum of PV and CF whole into T which is the time period whole divided by market price of the bond. Here PV and CF is the present value of a coupon at period T and T is equal to the time to each cash flow in years. This calculation is performed and summed for the number of periods to maturity. Friends, let us note down some principles of duration to keep in mind. Number one and foremost, as maturity increases, duration increases and the bond becomes more volatile. Secondly, as a bond's coupon increases, its duration decreases and the bond becomes less volatile. Lastly, as interest rate increases, duration decreases and the bond's sensitivity 
to further interest rate increases goes down. Bond convexity. For a given bond, a graph of the relationship between price and yield is convex. This means that the graph forms a curve rather than a straight line, what we call a linear curve. The degree to which the graph is curved shows how much a bond's yield changes in response to a change in price. Thus, this change in the yield is known as bond convexity. In this section, we will take a look at what affects convexity and how investors can use it to compare bonds. Convexity and duration. You can observe that in the image given, the graph has a tangent at a particular price of the bond, touching a point on the curve price yield curve. The linear tangent is the bond's duration, which is shown in red on the graph. The exact point where the two lines touch represents Mercurial duration. Modified duration must be used to measure how duration is affected by changes in interest rates. But modified duration does not account for large changes in price. If we were to use duration to estimate the price resulting from a significant change in yield, the estimation would be inaccurate. The portion between the straight line, tangent and the actual bond price of the graph show the ranges in which using duration for estimation price would be inappropriate. Furthermore, as yield moves further from Y star, the space between the actual bond price and the prices estimated by duration, the tangent line, increases. The convexity calculation, therefore, accounts for the inaccuracies of the linear duration line. This calculation that plots the curved line uses a Taylor series, a very complicated calculus theory that we won't be describing here. The main thing for you to remember about convexity is that it shows how much a bond's yield changes in response to a changes in price. Let us friends now learn something about immunization and rebalancing of bond portfolios. Friends, now we will focus on immunization. Bond immunization is a kind of investment strategy that intends to take advantage of the duration of bonds. Bond investors planning their investments efficiently will be eager to employ it over the long term. As an ardent and learned investor, one should know about this investment strategy and its application to the portfolio. Bond immunization is an investment strategy used against interest rate risk of bond investments. It is used by adjusting the portfolio duration and by matching the investor's investment time horizon. It does this by locking in a fixed rate of return during the amount of time an investor plans to keep the investment without cashing it in. Thus, immunization is locking the amount of investment in a fixed rate of return for the time period. An investor plans to keep the bond without cashing it in. We have learned previously that interest rate affect bond prices inversely. That is, when interest rates rises, bond prices slopes down. This is not the case when a bond portfolio is immunized. That is, the investor receives a specific rate of return over a given period of time, regardless of what happens to interest rates during that time. In other words, the bond is immune to fluctuations in interest rates. An investor need to note that for immunization of a bond, the investor need to know the duration of the bonds and thus adjust the portfolio accordingly so that the duration equals the investment time horizon. For instance, suppose you need rupees 5 lakh in 5 years for your child's education. You might decide to invest in bonds. You can immunize your bond portfolio by selecting bonds that will equal rupees 5 lakh in 5 years. 
regardless of interest rate changes. You can buy one zero coupon bond that will mature in five years to equal rupees five lakhs or several coupon bonds each with a five year duration or several bonds that average a five year duration. Duration measures a bond's market risk and price volatility in response to a given change in interest rates. Duration is a weighted average of the bond's cash flows over its life. The weights are the present value of each interest payment as a percentage of the bond's full price. The longer the duration of a bond, the greater is its price volatility. Friends, now we will focus on rebalancing. Rebalancing is an essential component of the portfolio management process. An investor investing in the market and the one who engages in the expert advice or a professional help for investments are exposed to desire level of systematic risk exposure and thus their portfolio manager has a responsibility to adjust investment holdings to adhere to the client's constraints and preferences. Although one need to know that portfolio rebalancing strategies incur transaction costs and tax liabilities. Friends, why is rebalancing advised? The answer to the above question is following. Firstly, portfolio rebalancing safeguards the investor from being overly exposed to undesirable risks. And secondly, rebalancing ensures that the portfolio exposures remain within the manager's area of expertise. There are several basic rebalancing options that either retail or institutional investors can utilize to create an optimal investment process. We will just briefly list out the same here for your convenience. There are two broad approaches to rebalancing. Number one, calendar and number two, threshold. We will now discuss calendar approach. In the calendar approach, the investor rebalances according to a set schedule, usually monthly, quarterly or annually, regardless of how much or how little a portfolio has drifted from its target allocations. On the plus side, rebalancing on a schedule takes the emotion out of the investing decisions. But if allocations have changed only slightly, you may incur trading costs and tax reporting hassles and spend some time without getting a lot of benefits. In contrast is threshold rebalancing, where only when a portfolio's asset allocations change, by a set degree, one tries to adjust it. The common rule of thumb is a change of 5 percentage points in the weightings of the major asset classes in portfolio. Thus, the portfolio rebalancing provides protection and discipline for any investment management strategy at the retail and professional levels. The ideal strategy will balance out the overall needs of rebalancing with the explicit costs associated with the strategy chosen. Friends, in this session, our motto was to understand and learn bond management. We explored in detail theories of bond management and various risks that bond valuation faces. We also gained knowledge about the term and risk structure of interest rates. We deeply explained about the duration and convexity of bond. Hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you.